man. Vandals, dude. Somebody just set this place on fire. that view good morning it's cold morning here at the desperado resort this is gonna be the best place ever you come stay here you will not be disappointed i mean you get to wake up every morning to this view watch the sunrise coming up over there it's a nice cool crisp morning too right now man and you're just up here up high on the bluff looking down you can watch the herds of axis come across the pasture maybe we'll get zebras too who knows but enough romanticizing about how beautiful this place is which it is possibly the most beautiful place in all of texas we got work to do and don't forget if you'd like to win yourself a beautiful japanese sports car a 1977 datsun 280z all you got to do is get you any Demolition Ranch shirt, hoodie, or hat, and you are entered to win. We're running this giveaway until Christmas, and then we will randomly pick one of you guys. So every hat, hoodie, and shirt gets you an extra chance to win this beautiful Datsun. I freaking love it. I drove it here this morning. Cool air. It's a good running little car for being as old as it is. It's fun. Sporty little Japanese car. Get you a shirt. Dang. This is our range. That's our awesome berm, which from way back here looks tiny, but that's uh, that's 20 feet tall right there. But we realized how packed we were when we were here. Um, we had all the vendors in like a little like V shape up there. Some were shooting at that berm, some were shooting at this berm. Um, and it was just packed and we realized we want more room for more companies to bring their firearms out here we also just want more room for people to shoot and so it was like you were having to be stacked like four people deep just to get up to the firing line to be able to have a shot I was like what if we did this times two so we're gonna start clearing that way so we have a big arch shape bermed here what if it made like an M where it arches comes back in and then arches and goes back out that way and we have a second one the second one won't be as tall it'll be a probably a pistol berm we want just one like super berm like this which is for all machine guns and 50 cals and big rifles but what if we just did one that's still like you know 15 feet tall over there so we don't have to put as much work into making such a humongous pile of dirt and it's just where you can have all the pistol vendors and pistol you know firing over there all the rifles and machine guns over here so today we are going to start clearing that to make the big M-shaped berm. It's for Matt. And my Bobcat is in the shop again. It's got a problem with the DEF, the um, EGR stuff. And so it's like always broken. So I'm borrowing someone's cat skid steer to do this work. Have you ever seen Fern Gully? Yeah, don't watch it. <laughs> uh, after that comment, I closed the door and the skid steer doesn't work anymore. Uh, it still goes forward, but the sensor is messed up with that door and it doesn't think the door's closed, so it won't let me move the arm. Freaking equipment is the worst. Everything is broken all the time. Literally did nothing. I opened the door, closed it, and the machine's like, we're not gonna run anymore. 
I'm tired, boss. So, I'm gonna get on a chainsaw. now the arm moves uh, <laughs> this little sensor was the problem and there's a little magnet you have to put in the right spot to unlock it just got to figure out the tricks to someone else's machine to make it work I'm here with none other than Crispy 11B. 11B. Ah, ah. Uh, what do you think? Dude, this is gonna be awesome. I thought this was great. I can't believe you're gonna expand it twice the size. It's gonna be gonna be awesome. It's gonna be good. So we made some pretty good progress. The guys are cutting. I was knocking some trees down. I just ended up just basically using this to get them out of the way. We don't have a grapple that'll fit this skid steer, so I'm having to like just try to scoop it all. Mm. Not working great. But are you gonna stack it and then burn it? Yeah, we're just gonna pile it all right there and burn it. So nice. we ground up the first, when we did this, we like, we mulched it all. Oh, okay. And that was good, but we realized we didn't really need it and it was way more expensive. So we're just knocking it down and burning it. Now it's all cedar, which is cool. There's no oak trees. There's no nice trees in there. It's all cedar. Oh, so no cedar fever for you. There will be. Yeah, I know. There's a lot more cedar. <laughs> <laughs> Around this time of year, us Texans get cedar fever. I already had some. Did you? Yeah. We just get allergic. It's just like my throat's getting scratchy just from the pollen. Oh yeah. It's about to start. Pollen yeah. starts dumping out of these trees. And then your vehicle's gonna be green. Yep. Oh man, dude, I can't wait for it to be over. Another be range done. day. Yeah. Big range day. We gotta plan for the next one. Make it bigger and badder than the one before. So I gotta, I gotta show up with something bigger than. Bigger gun? No, just like in general. Like maybe show up in a tank. You're on. Bring All a right. tank. Yes. <laughs> All right, everybody duck. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, these guns, because if I wasn't as strong as I obviously am, this would be hard work, but it's light, light work for me. Easy day. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it every day, but it's good for one day. I mean, it's easy. Piece of cake. I love it. No complaints. I'm not tired at all. that fire doesn't spread. We put it a little close because we were tired of pushing all the stuff way out in the open. So we started a new fire over here. If it did spread though, it'd make this work way faster. We get in a lot of trouble and uh, it should be really bad for me personally on my resort burning down, you know, a lot of the trees here. But 
The gun range part would be super convenient if it burned. Only that, nothing else, don't spread further. We're making our way. <laughs> We've been working for hours, have cleared about an acre, about two more to go. Jeez, it's going though, we're making it. Uh, it cost me like $16,000 to clear all of that and shred it all up before, which is the reason why we're out here today with chainsaws and a skid steer, so I can save $16,000. So really, when you think about it, I made 16 grand today. Not a bad day's work. We're making it though, slowly but surely, taking all these cedars. My mom would actually be really pumped about this because she's super allergic to cedar trees. She chops them down whenever they're growing around her house. So we're clearing acres of cedars. This is for you, mom. Wait, baby. All right. Oh, I'm gonna take a little break. Just cut down this whole section of trees right here. We got three saws going, and the skid steer is just out here to move the piles. Oh, it's slow, but good. We're slowly but surely making our way. And it's hard kind of figuring out what we're gonna build. I mean, the whole purpose of this range back here was just to get a range out here. And I just sort of picked a spot to put it. And we just started clearing and started building a berm without really any rhyme or reason. We just kind of picked a central location that had, you know, that was a safe spot. And then we decided when we started building it, we we're like, let's just make this one our huge, big main berm. So this is like the main attraction where we will have events. Like this is probably the berm it will be at. We're on the left side of it, on the back side of the left side right now. So shooting that way the big part of the back is that direction we uh just built that berm and then we started thinking like well where's the next berm because this is a huge property it's probably i don't know 80 ish acres on this back part where we're gonna have all this kind of stuff it's it's a 350 acre property so all the rest of it is going to be resort and family activities and hiking and river and caving if we can find a cooler bigger cave i don't think we're gonna be able to make that cave like a commercial cave, but I mean, I don't know. If you're young and healthy and you wanna like go swimming and go through air like this, we could do it with a guide pretty safely. Um, I just wish we could find a cave that was like, a grandma could just walk down in and check it out. Like, and kids, like a five-year-old kid could go check out a cave. Like, we haven't found one like that yet. But we have one for like, anyone between the ages of like 15 and 50, as long as you're physically fit, 60? I mean, you could do it for sure. 70? Yeah, you could do it. You could make it happen. But you just gotta, yeah, be fit and be willing to like get really muddy and really dirty and scrape your face along crickets. And it's freaking epic. It would be a time to remember. So we'll probably be able to make that one a guided tour kind of cave. But anyway, I got off track. I just really like caves. and I need to like spend some time and go try to find the other ones out here because I haven't done any caving in a while but I know there's gonna be some other cool caves on this property. But we just thought, let's get this range done and then let's see. So we did, and now we saw, and we're like, we need a bigger, wider range here. So that's the whole purpose of this area. It's gonna be similar in size, but to where we can spread out a huge event like we had last time, we would have liked a little more room, and we plan on it being bigger in the future. So now a bigger event can spread out further be safer and more comfortable for all the guests. Because uh, there were a lot of people who came and they were like, I didn't even you know, shoot anything because I just, you know, I didn't want to intrude. Like a lot of people felt like they're smaller names or whatever, so they didn't want to go push, you know, the Kentucky ballistics out of the way, which none of us would have cared, of course. Like we were all there to support each other. We were all small at one point. But I think they just kind of felt that way. They maybe just didn't want to bug anyone. Um, and so they didn't, yeah, want to push to the front and ask for their turn. So it'd be nice if it was just like super comfortable. That's the whole reason we're doing this. And then we've also talked about doing, um, I've talked to you guys about it, doing like gun competitions out here. Um, three gun matches. And so at three gun matches, they'll have like 10 or 12 stages. And so you're in your group of maybe 10 people and you go to stage one, which can be on this range where it's, you know, shooting 
pistols, rifle, and shotgun. And then you go to stage two and it might be all shotgun. And stage three might be long distance rifle. And stage four is like some pistol and some rifle. And so you need a bunch of different areas on the property to do that, which we could technically have in the future. It's just gonna take a long time to build it out and, and figure it out. We want also some different looking ranges. This part is all flat and it's all cedar everywhere. But on the edges, there are some really cool, like deep valleys. And so I haven't like explored them a whole lot to see if there are paths where we could do like run and gun through the valleys. But I'm like 99% sure that we can find something like that that would work. So it's just gonna take a lot more time, a lot more exploration, and a lot more thinking on our part. But for now, we found a need, and it is that we need this berm to be wider for the big events. And so that's what we're working on today. Also, let me know what you guys think of a shipping container um, tower with like windows and stuff looking out, maybe like 100 to 150 yards out and make it multi-level, like three levels of shipping container high or stack one like 40 footer on its end and put some stairs through it with windows out to where we could do like shooting out of that. And just a hangout area out of that would be kind of cool too. I don't know, I've, I've been like looking at like ranges all over the place and there's some pretty cool ones that have done some really cool things. And so I just kind of want to take the best parts of each range and then put it into my master plan, which is going to be pretty wild, I think, out here. We want this place to be something special, which I think you could see from just our first initial berm. We built it really big, overbuilt it, and made it just kind of epic looking already. We're just getting started. We've owned this property for like six months. Wait till we've owned it for six years to see what this thing looks like. Anyway, get ready, Demolitia. If you want a really cool place to shoot, I'm building it for you. Yep, she's stuck. <sighs> I'll go get Mikey. Got it. Huh. This is good stuff. I'm not tired. Not at all, but we're kind of about done for the day. This burn pile looks majestic and uh, apocalyptic all at the same time. Just everything, it kind of it kind of spread across the mulch. Looks great. Ooh, that's gonna be hot for a long time. That one's still going strong over there. All right, I'm gonna go up top and see what it looks like. Matt Carricker reporting in from on top of the berm. Look at that beauty. So for scale, that wood wall is 10 feet tall. And then the dirt goes another 10 feet over that. That's 20 feet tall there. So we are about 20 feet up right here. You can see this huge clearing over here and we started back here. So the way this is going to work is this is a big semicircle, big crescent that goes right there. We're gonna have it go a little further, maybe to where these little trees are right past the truck. It's gonna go all the way to there and then it's gonna come back around right through here and make another crescent, a big M shape, so that we could have two mirror image ranges. So theoretically, not even at an event day, but just at a normal training day, there could be a whole course running over here with 30 people in it. And there could be a whole course running over here with a different instructor, different course completely with 30 more people in it. And they wouldn't be bothering each other because they wouldn't really even hear each other talking. Um, you know, as this instructor is giving his lesson, they could be shooting over here. It wouldn't be bothering him. So we could have twice as many people out here training. The, you know, the PD could all be over here and there could be private, you know, civilian lessons going on over here and everybody can do it at one time. You don't have to like schedule out, you know, oh, there's already someone there at Tuesday, 10 in the morning. So that'd be pretty cool to have two ranges right off the bat that can function together in a really big event 
or can function totally separately in smaller events. God, this is good. So you can see this is our back line right here. I actually, I went a little too far and then I realized I was going too far, but that's gonna be our back line. And uh, it'll be a little further back, but it's just gonna arch around this way and then go back that way. So we need to go quite a bit further that way, a little bit further this way, and then just peel off and start building our second berm, which will probably be 15 feet high. When you go 20 feet high, you have to be super wide. You can see how far down, how far wide it goes on both sides to keep it from sloughing off. And so, and it's actually gonna get even wider because we still have a lot more brown dirt to bring up here. But we don't need to go this high. This will be the big range for all the crazy stuff. This will be smaller height wise. It'll still be a 15 foot tall berm, which is gonna be plenty high. Speaking of though, we did see in the video, some people were hitting the top of our berm, the very tip top with bullets while we were shooting at the Hummer, the very end where everyone's dumping machine guns and firing as fast as they can. There were some bullets striking the top. Now, I don't know if those were hitting the ground in front, cause you also could see some hitting the ground. I don't know if they're hitting the ground and skipping up there, or if someone was actually firing 20 feet above the target, but, you know, we did have some inexperienced shooters with some new to them firearms, or maybe maybe they didn't even know how to shoot firearms. And there was a lot going on. So I could see that someone who's not experienced maybe forgets to aim, and they're just firing, thinking it's all good. But they were hitting the top of the berm, which there's nothing back there, but you still don't want bullets flying over your berm. So I've been doing some research on ways to remedy that. Let me know what you think, though. I saw in one of Crispy's videos he went to a range that had telephone poles and they were all stuck in the ground and they were all next to each other. So they made like an old, like a fence you'd see in like a zombie movie, like a bunch of just telephone poles stuck in the ground all next to each other. So we could do a whole line of that for like 50 feet on just the center part of this berm, have a line of telephone poles next to each other that go up another, you know, 12 feet or something. That'd give us a 32 foot tall berm, which if you shoot over a 32 foot tall berm, Get off the range, man. You need to go practice more somewhere else. So I like that idea, just in the middle, because that's where all the crazy stuff will happen. You know, someone shooting at this target by themselves, nice and slow, is not gonna shoot 20 feet over. Someone machine gun firing in a line full of 100 other people machine gun firing, I could see how it could happen. So we just don't want that to happen. So we're just gonna try to minimize every single risk as close to zero as possible. That's the best solution I can come up with. That'll get us 32 feet of bullet stopping potential. I think it's pretty good. Let me know if there's any other better ideas though, because I'm all ears. I wanna make this thing freaking top notch, super safe. Oh, and while we're up here, so big berm, down there is where I was talking about putting in the shipping container towers, probably three high. I think that'd be cool. They're like, uh, I mean, they're that tall. So three of those stacked on top. How cool would that be? You go up some ladders to get to third story and you're firing, you know, it's 120 yards or we can clear those trees and go further back. My land goes way back that way too. So we could go way further back and make an awesome long range range from a shipping container tower to our giant wall over here. Slowly but surely, this will be the most epic range you've ever seen in your entire life. Everybody's gonna wanna be here. The President of the United States, even if it's Joe Biden, will be like, Matt, hey man, you got any space at your range? I really wanna come out. And then you'll get lost on the way. Dude, there's our flyover. We're just sitting around here looking at this range. The sun is going down over there, so it's like getting into that golden hour, so it's real pretty over here. We're just talking about how, you know, different different ideas, different ways we're gonna do this. We also were talking about how cool it'd be to come out here at night and do like some night vision courses, which Kilo Charlie Tactical, who I took a class with um, a year ago, he does rifle night vision classes. So it's all suppressed rifles. You got night vision on with IR lasers and I've never done, I don't, I've never shot a gun with an IR laser and he does whole classes on it. So it'd be really cool to do that kind of stuff at this range out in the dark. I think we need to test out that. Kilo, where are you at? Hit me up. Let's do some night vision. I guess I need to buy night vision. Uh, let me know in the comments below what I should be looking at. I know nothing about it. I'm gonna ask operator Drew. David has night vision. Night vision, you in? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I need to get me some night vision then. I'm gonna work on that keep working on these ranges and just turn this place into the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in the entire world. Thanks for watching. I love you. I'll see you next time.